but I'm still in southern Spain and finally I have one day of overcast. It's been bright blue skies and harsh sunlight every day since I got here. Uh, today it's a bit back and forth but it's pretty much an overcast day and that means I can keep shooting without getting those kind of harsh contrasty um, images which is something I don't like. And today though I'm focusing on small birds um, which is great with overcast light, nice diffuse light, even light over the entire bird. And today mainly I want to talk about getting close to birds. I've been getting a good few questions um, in my comments and also in direct messages, some from beginning photographers and even people that have been doing this for a while because it's getting close to birds it can be tricky and there's no one right answer to everything, to every situation. Some birds are easier to get close to than others. Some birds, most birds though, are very wary. And the best thing is to try and let the birds come to you. So that's why I'm sitting behind this camo net. And I've located an area where I have a really nice um, little planted conifer. And I'm hoping to get birds on that to take f pictures of them in this diffuse light on that because I think it'll make a nice composed image. There's a couple of other things that the birds can land on here that um, that also would look good but mostly I'm focusing on that one spot and waiting the birds land on there. And obviously you have to think that there's a reasonable chance that a bird will land on it because if not you could sit there for a really long time and nothing happen. And to be honest though, that can happen anyways, because I've had it for two hours now, and I still haven't had a bird on that particular tree. I've had, I've had one in a little aloe vera plant over there, uh, and that's been a nice composition, but my main target, and I think what will look best, is if they land on this little conifer tree in front of me. For getting close to birds, it's a good idea to learn the behavior of birds, to actually watch them, study them, where do they go, where do they go to feed, where do they go to breed, where do they go to drink water? And that's the main thing, uh, that's my main thing here uh, in southern Spain, because it's a dry environment, it's summer, hardly any water. We have a pond at the bottom of the garden that we're staying at, plus there's a little stream nearby. So we're getting a constant influx of birds around here. I'm getting a lot of spotted flycatchers that are actually hunting right over this little pond. Every now and then, not all the time. Like, like I said, I've been sitting here without getting anything. Uh, but that's, that's nature photography, and you have to have that patience. Because if not, most of the time you won't end up with that good images. You have to learn to have patience and wait and study. Um, and enjoy, just enjoy, you know, while you're sitting here, try and learn something about the habitat and the behavior of the birds that you do see. Anyway, so we get a good few other species in here. Uh, there's some gold, there's goldfinch, there's sarins, there's um, other warblers like Sardinian warblers, I think Orphean, Orphean warbler. I also come around this area. I haven't seen, I've only seen, I've seen another goldfinch land on this particular tree I'm interested in, but there's nothing to say that the other birds can't land there as well. On their way to the stream behind, or maybe just take a drink from this pond. I had green finch down here as well this morning. So first, I just staked out the, the area here with binoculars. And you can see this in the video I did for Tragopon when I actually I used this um, setup here with a camo net. And I did quite a lot of it from here. And you can see there that I just went down here with binoculars and I just sat a fair distance away and just watched and see what would come around. And make sure that you know birds actually do come here. And it didn't take long before I saw that, and I was happy that, you know what, this is an area that I can come back to. I can set up this camo net, and I'm about probably four meters away from that um, conifer tree. And that's not enough to fill the frame with a little small little bird, but I quite like to put them in their environment, make the bird a little bit smaller in the frame. Uh, and the background is far enough away as well that with my f-stop of 5.6, which is low as this particular lens goes, which is the 100-400 uh, Canon lens, uh, my background is fairly well blurred out. It's not a complete even um, 
unfocused area of green, but you, you can tell there's slightly different kind of colors in the background. There's something going on, but not, not too distracting. And that's what I'm aiming for here. So after that, I have my, I've set this up. I've got myself comfy with a chair. I got a tr camera on a tripod, so I don't have to sit and hold it the whole time. But I'm pointing at it, and like here now, the light changes from very light clouds to darker clouds to sometimes even the sun coming through. And every time I notice a change in light, I go in and I make sure that my exposure is right. I'm shooting in full manual, um, so I want to always be sure that my exposure is correct for the moment a bird lands there and I can just shoot away immediately. And since I'm taking more portrait images now, it's not I'm not aiming for birds in flight. I'm just aiming I, then I'm just trying to get my eye so as low as possible and still have enough shutter speed to freeze any kind of bird movement. I have my camera lens on a tripod, so I'm not too worried about any movements that I make, but I do want to make sure that the bird's movement is frozen. And I don't mind taking this uh, shutter speed down to 200th of a second. I try to aim for more 400th of a second around there. That's plenty. 200th of a second, I may find that every now and then uh, the, the image won't be sharp because of a little movement. But it depends what my ISO is. I try to aim for my ISO down to the 400 mark or so. If my ISO would have to be at 2000 um, to get a shutter speed of 400, I'd rather take my ISO down to 1000 and have a shutter speed of 200 of a second. This camera, Canon 7D Mark II, is a great camera, but um, for the ISO performance isn't great. So I'd rather than put on burst mode, take a few shots, and a few of them will come out sharp. Anyway, so I'm just gonna continue here while the light is good, sit here, be quiet, see if we can't get something else. At first, I had a spotted flycatcher and it landed on the tree exactly where I wanted to. I actually landed a little bit further down first, but that created a pretty nice image as well. After a little while though, it flew up to the top, which is where I had my lens and camera pointed at most of the time because that's where I wanted the bird to land. Obviously, when it landed further down, I would go down and take the photos because I don't know if it's gonna land where I want it to. But then it came back, flew up, landed exactly where I wanted to and that's just everything just comes together then and I was just so happy um, have a look at this I right, got a bit of light coming through the clouds now so hopefully I won't get anything just now anyways it may have looked very I mean from what I'm showing in the video, it may have looked very easy and fast to get the output of the flycatcher on the little conifer where I wanted it. But if you look at the whole process, if you go check out the video that I did for Tragopon, when I first came here, I was, I was scouting out the area just with my binoculars. I was sitting further away, looking at birds, just seeing checking their behavior, seeing if they actually use the area, and I could see that they would come here to drink, they would come here to, um, some of them would, like the flycatcher would come here to hunt, and I would see that they would land on some of these trees. Then I had to find a location to actually hang this from, um, and make sure that I had the right distance, and I come here with my camera to make sure that the distance behind the tree is significantly far enough away to blur up my background, and then, there was this, and then there was light. I came here uh, in the evening to photograph for the video. And anything that landed on that tree then didn't look very good because the sun was setting over there 
and it would be more of a side light, half back light, and I would never get, so I would get like parts of their back um, in, in nice golden light and nothing else. So that didn't work. But then I had some cactus over there which worked really nice to have them backlit. Um, and that were nice. But then I had to come back to try for this again. And it wasn't now until finally I had a day, overcast day, and I would have the nice diffuse light, just perfect for this kind of photography. And of course then I came here in the morning and I sat here for probably three hours. And the light, the sun is coming out, so creating harsh light, going behind clouds again, nice soft lights, so back and forth. And meantime, I hadn't actually had many birds on there. So I sat here for a good few hours waiting, just waiting. Uh, but I don't mind that, that's part of it for me. I actually, I, I like it. Um, obviously when it becomes, it drags on and on. It's, it's kind of like a muscle that you build up over time. In the beginning, it's really hard to sit still here for a long time. And I still find it hard to sit still here for a really long time. But you just start to enjoy it more and you, you start to observe more and uh, you learn more as you sit here. And when you get rewarded with the images that you want and the wildlife coming close to you, that makes it all worth it in the end. When it comes to getting close to small songbirds like this, I find the best approach is to knowing where they're going to be. Or maybe you could even set up a feeding station or a little water pond so that they get attracted to the location you have in mind. And then pick pick an area to focus on where you think they might land. Uh, even if you want to set something up, you can pick nice branches, set them up in a nice way, make, then you can control all the variables. You can control how far away your background is, where you're going to set up, um, just where you're going to set up your camera and yourself. And then you just got to hide a little bit because most birds will not come close to you if you're out in the open. Some will, some are, some are totally used to people, some are very used to people very habituated and they don't mind but if you want to have the most chances of getting the most types of birds close to you something like this either a hide something as simple as a camo net like this or even something you can make yourself you can make a, a sheet hang it up cut a little window for your camera and hide behind it or some other structure you could sit out inside in a shed or even inside the house if you can peek out the window it doesn't really matter as long as you're sufficiently hidden. And it's a bit of a trial and error to just see see what works. Uh, I really like this though, because I I could travel with this. I'll just take it with me. And it doesn't weigh much, doesn't take up much space in my luggage. So I can take this with me uh, and throw it up anywhere. And just put my, I can kind of tear off one of these to put my lens out through them. And this works, just works really well for me. Well, you do need to have some structures to hang it up from, but you can get comfy with a chair, set up your tripod, and just take your time with it. Now, I thought I'd just give a little bit of a tip here as well when it comes to these kind of portraits of songbirds, is that the angle of the head when it comes to birds really matter. Uh, what I try to go for here is slightly diagonally towards the camera is a great look. Uh, Rarely would a bird look good if it's looking straight at the camera. Sometimes it does work. Um, duck species it could work with. It just depends what you have and you need to, you need to try a lot of things. Uh, but most of the time, um, what will almost always look good is that diagonal to the camera. If you look at this image that I got here, so I think that there works where it's tilted towards me. That doesn't work going away, doesn't work at all, starting to better. It's just a bit of a thing to experiment with and soon you'll you get an eye for what works but aiming for that kind of diagonal look towards the camera always going to work uh, and also if you can get it so that the side you get that glint in the eye also really works so now the sun is over there so whenever the bird is kind of pointing the, looking this way with the eye it's kind of pointing towards that sun it's going to get that glint in the eye whereas if it's pointing that way most likely unless it's some reflective surface or something else that will make that glint in the eye then 
it won't have that it'll just be black and that glint really does add something to a photo try and try and look at photos where you see a glint in the eye and the ones you don't see and you'll really notice that it does help a lot to really make that image just pop a little bit more and just look a little bit nicer Thank you very much for watching this video. I've created a little guide on my website for starting a wildlife photography vlog. So if you're interested in that, follow the link uh, above somewhere or in the description below. And check that out, maybe you'll find it useful. And uh, thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time.